So, I've been with the company now for just a little over two years. And as I've recently announced, I've just been promoted to be the editor of Time and Tide, so I will be heading up the editorial content coming in the future. But you know what? As many articles as I've written and videos that I've done, I just wanted to take this time once again to let you guys get to know me a little bit better. So, my name is Zach Glass. I'm the editor of Time Tide Watches, and I'm based in New York City. How did I get into watches? Well, it really runs in the family. My grandfather actually sold watches for a living. And as a kid, I was always enamored with his Datejust 36 two-tone with a white dial, uh, yellow roller sort of configuration. The Cyclops, the Cyclops lens over the dial really, it piqued my interest as a, as a really young child. And it was his one watch. So he always stressed upon me that the importance of, you know, saving money and being pragmatic. And so there was a period for a little bit where I kind of wasn't, I didn't have my attention totally drawn on watches. But as the rise of digital watch media came about, I was pulled right back in. So, you know, here we are years later after consuming every watch media under the sun, and of course, time and tide, that my fascination with watches still to this day continues to grow. So before working for time and tide, I worked a, a few different jobs in CPG marketing, so that's consumer packaged goods. But ultimately the goods that really get me excited are timepieces. So I really wanted to move into this industry and the first job I had in this industry was working with Piaget as a watch specialist. Um, so I was selling watches in store right in Hudson Yards. I'm sure many of you have probably been to that boutique. And look, it was an incredible experience. I loved being around the ultra thin watches. My goals, however, were always to, to write about watches versus selling them. And for, for better or for worse, the, <laughs> the pandemic hit and stores were closing down, but ultimately it led to me uh, reaching out to Andrew and joining on the site to, to write. Uh, I had written a reader submission for the site previously. It was a story about me finding an SBWA-001 Seiko, uh, a very exciting hunt that took, fortunately, under a year. Um, <laughs> but it, I think it was clear to both me and to Andrew after that article and the success of it, even as a reader uh, contribution, that ultimately, um, that I should write some more. And so I'm so glad that he let me. I started as a contributor, then I became a staff writer, then the US editor, then deputy editor, and now here we are a little over two years later as the editor of Time and Tide Watches. Some of you might be wondering, which watches do I wear the most within my own collection? Well, I have to say, I always try to wear a different watch each day. I try to spread the love throughout my collection, but I would say right now, the watches I've been wearing the most are my Rolex Datejust 36. Again, as we spoke about before, really the source of inspiration for me, my grandfather, it was his watch, not his personal watch. This is a watch that I, I bought on my own. Um, and then I would say after the Datejust 36, our Zenith Night Surfer Time and Tide Edition, that gets a lot of wear time. I was just in Florida playing tennis and going to some different theme parks like a little kid, even though I'm a full grown adult. Um, and you know, playing tennis with the watch on. It's super lightweight, so it was a real pleasure uh, to, you know, to bring with me on my trip. And I would say three right now, because it's just so exciting and enticing. My mad, my mad one red. Yeah, that's definitely getting a lot of wear time, for, for sure. Anytime I'm willing to put a watch on a strap, because it is hot right now, I've been gravitating towards the mad one. And I guess there's a fourth, just to throw it in there. Why not? I love watches. Let's, let's keep talking about them. Uh, my Alanga Inzuna up down. My 1815 up down reference 221021, any formal occasion, that's the watch I'm putting on my wrist. It's the one that makes me feel like I am not just Zach Glass, but I guess as John Mayer would say, Mr. Zachary B. Glass. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a very, very nice watch and it ties into my German heritage. So I, I, I'm, I'm very fond of it. Now, what's next on my hit list? Well, I've actually just put down a deposit I think this won't come as a surprise to people who watch our Watches and Wonders coverage, although it did come as a surprise to me that I was able to get an allocation. The Cartier Santos Dumont, the pink gold case with beige lacquer, the limited edition of 200 pieces. Well, I count myself lucky that come, I think, give or take December when it arrives, to be one of the lucky owners of, of that watch. Uh, I was fawning over it at Watches and Wonders. For me, it's really cool because not only is it aesthetically really just beautiful. I mean, that beige lacquer, it's so creamy, it's so nice. But inside the watch, uh, Cartier actually uses a watch that's developed by Piaget, where I used to work. So outside, it's really just the hot girl watch. It just looks really sexy to me, you know, to, <laughs> to put it simply. 
and then inside there's a little bit of a subtle meaning for me in terms of my past and watches as well. Um, so yeah, that's the next watch that will be added to my collection. Well, I, look, I might be a little bit boring, and the watch is quite simple, at least its name would suggest, but the Philippe Dufour simplicity in 34 millimeters, not even 37, in 34, uh, that's the watch where, as hard as it would be, I would stop watch collecting on the spot if someone gave me that watch. Uh, I wouldn't need another watch. That would be the watch. I'd give up every kidney I would, or any organ I could give up to get that watch. I would, I would, done. No hesitation. So Philippe Dufour Simplicity, that's my Grail watch. Guys, look, I, I hope that this has been a nice chat between you and I, and I look forward for you guys getting to know me more and reading more of our articles, not just me, but my entire team. And as always, see you on the next one.